Hello, and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and have never been trapped underground in a mine. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share some of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's dig in to today's stories, literally. It's 365 with MXM Tune every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 365 today in 2010 the world breathed a collective sigh of relief as 33 men were rescued after being trapped in a mine in copia pochili they'd been below the surface of the earth for 69 days longer than any human has ever survived underground. Let's go back to how the miners got trapped in the first place. On October 5th, the main ramp into the San Jose mine where the men were working collapsed. The 33 miners were trapped 2,300 feet underground. And in the beginning, there was no way for them to communicate with people above ground. It's hard to conceptualize what 2,300 feet underground is, but let's try. 2,300 feet is a little less than half a mile. If you've run a mile recently, no shame if you haven't, running in a mask is tough, and I definitely haven't done that. Think about the halfway point. Now, think about running that, but into the earth. Whether or not you can picture it, I'm sure you know that is very deep and very scary. On top of the depth, being that far underground is hot and humid, but more in a I'm suffocating way rather than a woohoo summer way. Miners are experienced at being underground, but no one is used to being trapped underground for days on end. The day after the miners became trapped, the Chilean government convened a team of 130 people to begin work on the rescue. Then, things went from bad to worse. There was a cave-in on the path that the rescuers were using to attempt to reach the miners. For the first two weeks, no one knew if the miners were dead or alive. The miners made first contact with the rescuers via a note they attached to a probe. When technology fails, you end up going back to the oldest methods. The note read, We are fine in the shelter, the 33 of us. The probe and the note came through a hole the size of a grapefruit. It was the only connection the miners had to the world outside. As it turned out, the probe wasn't just a much-needed method of communication between the miners and rescuers. They were also able to ferry food and water down into the mine. Prior to this advancement, the miners had been rationing a small emergency food supply that was meant to last only two days. They stretched it out to last two weeks, with each man only eating two cookies and a spoonful of tuna every 24 hours. Over the course of the 69 days in the mine, the men lost an average of 18 pounds each. As summer gave way to fall, most of September was dedicated to the building of a rescue shaft. The drilling process was going well enough that officials declared that the men could be rescued within October versus later in the year as previously estimated. On the day of the rescue, the men were transported into a specially designed capsule called the Phoenix, one at a time, through the 2,000 feet of rock. The tunnel was created by boring a shaft and then casing it in metal to prevent further collapse or rock falls. As the men were released into the open air one by one, the rescue was touted around the world as miraculous, and one billion people watched it on live TV. Church bells chimed throughout the city as the world looked on. One miner, Franklin Lobos, a former soccer player, was thrown a soccer ball when he got out of the mine. He juggled it back and forth and then said, that was the toughest match of my life. For several days after, he and the miners wore dark glasses because their eyes were so unused to the natural light. While they were trapped, the men developed a small-scale political system to make decisions and aid in the process of trying to escape, voting on all choices that affected their potential rescue. The men basically created a miniature society. They set aside areas for games to keep them distracted during the long stretches of uncertainty, had prayer hours, designated chores, and made schedules to uphold a sense of normalcy. In videos that the miners sent to officials to show that they were still alive and in need of rescue, they actually appeared to be keeping in good spirits and relatively good health, considering the circumstances. And that's certainly an inspiration for quarantine. If these miners can smile while literally being trapped underground, we can definitely find things to be happy about while trapped in our own homes. The foreman of the group once said, It's been a bit of a long shift, in reference to the days spent underground. 
His sardonic attitude shows how humor is more than just a distraction. It's a way to keep moving forward when you're in an impossible situation. The miners' teamwork also helped them stay sane and bond together. They agreed before they left the space that they'd split the proceeds of any movie or book written about their story evenly. 33 ways. The eventual book is called Deep Down Dark, and the movie is called The 33. While the miners were trapped, experts from NASA and the Chilean Navy worked together to begin to assess the psychological toll that the isolation might have had on them. Sound familiar? We're definitely in a different type of isolation now, but I think we could all learn a few lessons from the trapped miners about how to stay positive during isolation. I said this in the beginning, but it bears repeating. The miners lived underground for longer than any human in recorded history. Oh my god, I'm gonna go take a look at the sun now. Unfortunately, the miners' happy years post-rescue didn't last forever. Jose Odeja, who inscribed the first message that let the rescuers know the miners were alive, now suffers from diabetes and has nightmares about his weeks underground. Though the miners did receive money after the incident, much of it has run out as their long-term health care has proved prohibitively expensive. Mario Sepulveda managed to make good out of the ordeal. He's still a motivational speaker and was played by Antonio Banderas in The 33. And now for today's music fact, we have another special guest. Sizzy Rocket is an alt-pop artist, and she is here to talk about her latest album, Anarchy, and a new music video. Take it away! October 13th is a really special day in my life. Um, On this day last year, we checked into the downtown loft where we ended up making my new record, Anarchy. There's actually a song on there called Spill My Guts. It's my favorite. Um, It was up and running within an hour of checking into the loft. And coincidentally, today, the video drops. Um, So there's a lot of magic in the air. Go check out the video. And I hope you love it as much as I do. And for today's final segment, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on an October 13th in my life. Okay, on October 13th, 2019, I was in Central Park with one of my best friends, Natalie. And Natalie and I both led an acapella group in high school. And so one of our favorite things to do is sing together. And so we found an abandoned, not an abandoned, but an empty tunnel in Central Park that had a nice echo, and we started singing. I can't remember what song we were singing, but I have a bunch of photos of us standing there inside of this tunnel, and I think we were the only people in this, like, corner of Central Park, and so NYPD rolled up to me and Natalie as we were singing, and we were both, like, really scared because we didn't know what was going to happen, and, you know, cops are scary. (laughs) So we, so we, so we were, I, like, walked up to them. I was, like, guarding her. I was, like, um, sorry, can we help you? And they're, like, what are you guys singing? And we had to sing for NYPD inside of Central Park that night because they wouldn't leave us alone until I was singing. So that was a mortifying ordeal. I didn't enjoy it. It happened though. Um, and I and I forgot about it until today when I was looking at my photo archive. So yep, that's my memory for today. And that's all for this episode of 365 Days with MXM Tune. Thank you all so much for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to it. And you can follow at 365 Days MXM Tune on all platforms to stay up to date as we release new episodes. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you tomorrow. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's th-